I mean, I don't have to see myself. And, White, and I am in the kitchen, sort of, with Shell Kid and Jackie Schwartz. And this is a premier show for us at Creating Calm Network about joining the kitchen with Shell Kid. He is the founder and the creator of Cooking in the Raw. And the reason it's called Cooking in the Raw is because it's an unedited, unscripted video. And if he makes mistakes, it is live and on the air. So there we go. We have Jackie Schwark, or Jackie Glue Schwark. She is the co-producer of Cooking in the Raw. And she is a local marketing consultant in Sheboygan, probably all around Wisconsin, I would think, Jackie. And yeah, and one of the things about Shell, and Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we were to look at the way he approaches food, it is with passion and with enthusiasm. Am I right? Absolutely. Spot on. I'm a little shy, though, you know. <laughs> oh, you're going to see that yeah. here tonight's show. One of the quotes I like from Shell is he says, I learned from my travels that food, wine, and friends our life's secret to happiness. And I think that's what this show embodies. That's why I was attracted to their show, Cooking in the Raw. And Jackie and Shell, would you share with the Creating Calm audience when you do your Cooking in the Raw happy hours and your um, your actual cooking show coming up on May 21st? I'll let you do it. Yeah, so what we do is we do three weeks of, we call it our happy hour. And we, we kind of like to get around the internet, so we post those, to, uh, those shows basically at our Facebook pages and on Google, of course, show is on Cooking in the Raw on Google, so you should seek him out. Also on his Facebook page, Cooking in the Raw as well, Cooking in the Raw magazine, I guess we should call that one on Facebook, you know, you'd be able to tune in and find us there as well. And then what we do after those three weeks, that leads us up to the live 30-minute show where... I'm pretty much behind the camera, and then it's all eyes on Shell. <laughs> and he cooks for 30 minutes. <laughs> Great. And Jackie, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, yep, people can find me at um, Sheboygan Hangout Local, and that's on my Facebook page. Otherwise, on Google, you can find me at Jackie Twerk. So feel free to connect with me. I would love that and, and have, have a great conversation with you. That sounds great. And cooking in the raw show, you know, at first I thought you were going to have raw foods, but I know that's not cooking. Then I thought you were going to be naked, and I see you're correct. <laughs> Share with our listeners, again, where you got the name and what the history of cooking in the raw is. Well, I mean, for myself, I mean, it's been a long years of passion. I've been a retired chef now. I've been cooking for over 25 years. And cooking in the raw came out of one day when this whole video boom came into play and Jackie approached me years ago and asked, hey, have you thought about doing video? You know, I had a wine store at the time. And I said, yeah, I thought about it, you know, but it's too expensive to do, blah, blah, blah. And so we shot a video one afternoon and I said, okay, what I want to do is an instructional video. I want to just do a raw video. So we didn't have a name then when we shot the first video. So we shot the first video and we were talking and laughing, you know, and making jokes and said, wow, you know, I mean, they can actually hear this because I wanted no sound. No sound whatsoever. <laughs> so we shot the video. We so said, oh, my God, wow, we got a video. It's great, fantastic, you know. And I would say years later, we look back, and it's like, what a difference. What was I, what was I thinking about not talking on the show or having fun? Mm -hmm. You know, so out of that raw video, that raw video footage and cooking, the name cooking in the raw just began to evolve, and then it had to be defined. You know, but again, using that raw footage was like, you know what, I don't want to do a, an aesthetic cooking show. You know, I don't, I don't want to be dressed up as a chef, and I don't want to, you know, have a lot of prepared things, you know, or a prepared speech or, 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 or a, a, a plot. Yeah. I just want to get in the kitchen, create something with what I have, you know, nice and clean, nice and simple, and there you go. There's cooking in the raw. I thought about dancing on the show, you know, but <laughs> that wasn't going to work. <laughs> you have know, a little of that. But as opposed, to, as opposed to raw food, I mean, there will be some elements of raw style cooking. That's something that interests me as well, you know, and also to educate people a little bit more on that, you know, because we, we kind of come from eating raw food, but now it's become a business. You know, you know, when it comes to food, when these, I say, not say fat, but when these evolutions begin to happen in food, then the everyday consumer thinks, well, wow, I can't do that. So cooking in the raw wants to say, forget all that. We want to make it easy. You can do anything. It's about your taste. Let your palate be the guy. Oh, well, that sounds great. I'm looking forward to getting into it. And for the Cooking in the Raw show, 
Michelle cooks with a whole range of foods, all good foods, um, but I got attracted to it because he makes it look doable. And for all of us, the more we can cook real food and bring a meal to our friends and our family, I think it makes for a better world, a more loving world. And for this show, Shell has said he was going to give us a vegetarian meal, so I'm going to back out, sit back, and let the two of them work some magic. So, <laughs> all right. Hello there. I want to thank Creating Calm Network for having us here with you guys this evening. Uh, if you dare, give a shout out, say hello, type in the chat, you know, got any questions. My name is Mark Shelby. Shell for short, a.k.a. Shell, I should say, the host of Cooking in the Raw show, and we're going to do a vegetarian dish here. I like to do things on the spot, as I said before, and looking at the greens that I had here in Wisconsin, you know, I try to do things seasonally here. Here in Wisconsin, we like in that transition of winter and spring, or like spring and summer, you know. I mean, it's not that warm here, so we're still waiting a lot of our vegetables to sprout and to come up. You know, but you can find still some uh, some good vegetables at the Winters Farmers Market for those farmers who started planting early. So today, with a little bit of what I got from the, the uh, Winter Farmers Market and a little bit of what I picked up from my local grocery store or market, I'm going to prepare vegetarian tacos. You know, again, in the kitchen, it's just all about simplicity, and that's what I try to do here, just keep it all uh, simple. What I did earlier, though, Earlier today, I started preparing a vegetable stock. I mean, how easy it is to prepare a vegetable stock? You know, maybe not early, maybe about uh, 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes ago. Just simple carrots, onion peelings, some onion, garlic, uh, garlic cloves, uh, garlic peelings, some uh, bell peppers, toss it in the pot. Cover it with water, let it go. You know, the longer let it go, the darker, the deeper the flavor. So I have that going on inside of the pot here, right here. And then your black beans. I uh, made some black beans earlier. Since the show ran 30 minutes, I couldn't <laughs> make black beans earlier. You know, I like to do a lot of things from scratch. I mean, I was taught making beans from scratch, but be sure to find yourself a good quality uh, uh, pre-packaged black beans. We're going to utilize that as well. So that black beans going on the back. Over here, I have some brown rice. You know, that's uh, cooking away right now. I'm going to spice that. I like to start with a clean slate when I cook and flavor my ingredients based on how I feel. Now, if you get a look at this, shot over here, Jackie. I like to call this my mad science laboratory, you know. What I have over here is just a jar of uh, little containers of different spices, you know. So I create my own spice blends, you know, when I'm cooking. You know, whether it be uh, Spanish spices, uh, any type of European spices or herbs or Middle Eastern spices, you know, Israeli spices. I can do all those different things here. So I like to keep that. And I go with how I feel and just start flavoring. So now that that's said, <laughs> I guess... We should start cooking. Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. <laughs> so I'm going to finish putting some items inside of my stock pot here. So I got some cloves, some garlic I'm going to chop up early, but I'm going to throw the skins just right inside of the simmering stock. I mean, all this is begins to add flavor. So waste not. I mean, these come from the years of cooking in the kitchen. Everything has a purpose. You should be able to utilize everything in your kitchen for the most part. You know, so I try to do that as much as possible so I don't waste anything. What do you call that? Clean footprint? I'm going to leave nothing behind. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nothing behind. So I'm going to put some the rest of these garlic skins in here. The soup, the uh, broth is already going on its own. Nice and flavorful. I taste it early before we start the show. I'm going to go back over there, Jake, because I'm going to put some onion skins in here. Yeah. And then I'll be finished. I'm always amazed when I see you put skins in. Well, that's in, a lot of in the stock. Yeah, I guess I never would have thought of doing that. I mean, yeah, these are all the tricks of the trade, things that you learn, you know, when you're cooking. I mean, you can use the whole vegetable too, but if you got if you got a fresh vegetable or something, you know, and, it, and it's nice and clean, it's something that, that, that you nurtured or something that a local farmer nurtured, I mean, feel free to use it. I mean, at one point when we were all kids, we ate a little bit of dirt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I got that going. I'm going to use and flavor some things. I'm going to do some carrot shavings here because instead of, I'm mean, going to have some different greens, but we're going to put some garnishes, edible garnishes, on top of our tacos. So I'm just going to shave off some of these carrots here we're going to use here to decorate and also to add color to our dish and different flavors, different textures. Again, very, very simple here. So we got that going. I got some peppers that, now interesting about these peppers, bell peppers, you know, working with a local farmer's market, there's a lot of vegetables, you know, that you get and you accumulate into the season. 
what I like to do is just chop them up, sauce them up, and stick them in the freezer. So what you're looking at right here is the last of the peppers from last season. You know, nothing goes away. It's like the things continue to use everything. So let's get this turned up here. That's going, that's going. Carrots done. Get my garlic chopped up here. So I'm just going to chop up some garlic. I'm going to use this to flavor my rice and maybe a little bit to flavor the beans. Not a lot. Watch I mean, your fingers. Got to watch them. This is a live show, right? So you, have, you have to watch the fingers. You know, it's always been my fear, but it's been habits. So that's the show. And we'll keep rolling. We'll keep rolling. It reminds me of a time when I was younger in the kitchen, you know, and I, uh, I was young and you try to do things fast, and everyone's rushing around. You know, you, you have deadlines of food to get done. And I remember cutting my finger, uh, going and getting a Band-Aid, putting on what they call rubber co uh, finger condoms, and putting a glove on top of that, and you just kept on going. <laughs> now, those were the days. So I got some garlic going here. Now I'm going to slice up some onion. You know, a little bit of onion for the flavoring, and then a little bit of fresh onion that we're going to use. So I see you're using a red onion. Yes. I mean, I like color, I like flavor. And believe it or not, all the different onions out there are going to give you an entirely different flavor, you know, to your dish. Some will be a little bit more pungent. Some will be a little bit more sweet, a little bit more tang. I mean, it's just like fruit. I mean, different things will give you an entirely different flavor. All right. So we got that going here. That's going to be for when I began to saute, to add to the, actually, you know what? I'm just going to take that fresh, and I'm going to just add this to the pot, to the pot of simmering beans here. Oh, you're putting that right in there. I'm putting it right in there. I like that. You know, that's going to cook down. By the end of the show, that's going to cook down, be nice and soft and flavor what we got going on here. Good. That's going to take care of that. I'm going to save a little bit of this for something else. Let me get a spoon in here. Stir that in. I mean, what you want, I mean, you want to, when you're cooking, you're eating, and try to get that, that fresh taste of everything here. Now, go back to the mad science lab here. <laughs> what we're going to do here, I'm going to put in shells double zero, just a little bit of that. Double zero is a secret spice that I come up with here. Double zero flavors everything, but there's like 10 different spice combinations that I've created, and it all stems from double zero. In double zero, you have a little bit of paprika, you have some cayenne or dried chilies, you have cumin inside of here, garlic, some herb, and all these things blend together and give us a nice, flavorful spice. And no salt in that either, right? In, in that double, is, do you put salt in no, here? I put okay. no salt in any of my base spices. I control the salt that's going in my dishes and flavor things accordingly as I go along. So with the spice, I like to keep those naked and then flavor with salt as I need it. Because, you know, if I, play, if I put the salt in ahead of time, which is different for a lot of people, and that's why if I ever put these spices in the market, it's going to be really different because there won't be any salt in them. It's just going to be the spice themselves. I was surprised to learn how many people never even taste just raw spices. You know, how else are you going to know what things taste like? So doing that, tasting raw spices, you feel, oh, yeah, I need to add this much uh, pepper to it, this much salt to it. All right, I'm going to cut this avocado here because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it avocado sauce to go in our tacos. Earlier today, I have some, I got some of Jackie's uh, family recipe tomato sauce. Oh, and yeah. This is going to work as like our hot sauce. <laughs> this is, again, freshly made, freshly made every season, you know, utilizing all your ingredients, you know, in the garden. Get this cut up here. Yeah, and that's actually the last of that sauce. The last. The that's last. I mean. this, this transition, <laughs> this transition here is tough. You know, all the different ingredients. So I mean, we all should know how to open up a, a cut open a avocado by now. But be careful, you know, this isn't a, a butter knife. Be careful, you have your sharp knife so that you don't 
cut yourself. All right, I'm going to get that scooped out. It's going right into the blender. You know, so instead of making a guacamole, you know, I want to I want to do something with sauces. Again, a lot of the dish is going to be lightly flavored. And I want a lot of the flavor to come from different sauces that we're going to be using. Make sure we're not overdoing things here. That's looking good. That's looking good. That's simmering. All right. Let's get the seed out. Now that was cool. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? A lot of these tricks, you know, some people learn them from the uh, cooking shows. I, myself, my grandmother absolutely loved avocados. You know, in the summertime, we had avocados, you know, like three or four times a day. She loved it. So it became natural for us to open up avocados. In addition to that, we would make tamales every summer as well, you know, in our family. I mean, so it was, I come from a, from a history of cooking, you know, in my family. You know, something I really enjoyed. I'm glad that I continue to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, nice batch of this sauce here. What do you say, Jack? I, I love avocados. So we'll do that. I'm I mean, interested so, to see what you're going to do with it. Well, I mean, <laughs> different ways. I mean, the thing what happens with people in cooking is, you know, there are different things that you can do with food. I mean, we follow these these standards. I like to call it a book of standards, recipe of standards. We follow these standards and I realize, you know, a dish is still going to taste the same and you can just change the way it is. And this sauce we're doing, this avocado sauce, can be a warm sauce and it can be a cold sauce. In this case, I'm going to be doing a warm sauce. My job. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I came across this. We live here in Wisconsin. You know, we don't get a lot of sunshine. you got to take what you get. And when it happens, it comes quick. But when it does happen, it's really nice. So I'm going to try to root these avocado seeds, you know, and see if I can at least get one, just one <laughs> avocado off of my little avocado bush. Oh, that would be great. You know, I need something to go with my vineyard. You know, we also, I also make my, make uh, fresh grape juice from some grapes that I grow here. I have a 10-year-old vineyard of wine grapes, and we'll make fresh grape juice from that. And it's so delicious. Oh, my gosh. It's like the best grape juice I've ever had. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Let's move this over here. I'm going to need that. It's almost Later. like a dessert. <laughs> Your grape juice. So, to this. Now, here is just a slight variation of the double zero uh, spice, but this one has smoky paprika in it. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can use it as a simple spice shaker. And I'm going to add a little bit of this to the avocado. So it's almost like guacamole, but in a sauce form. Uh, a little bit of lemon juice. Again, we're not in season yet. So you work what you can, find a good quality, what you're doing. And then I'm going to add some of the broth. Just a little bit of that. My lid. And puree. Sorry for the noise, but it is a raw show. <laughs> Off a little bit. Now remember, I like to cook that you can always add, but you can't subtract. So you have to be very careful when adding things. Same with seasoning, same with liquids. You can always add, but you can't subtract. Alright, let that stop. Safety is always first. Blade to stop turning. Get that mixed up in there. Now, if you're in here. Okay. And go fry now. A little bit more. Alright, a little bit more here. We're going to go a little bit here. Now, before I add this salt, I want to get the consistency that I want. Straight down. All right, that's coming together. Now, I want it to be not thick. I want it to be really saucy, but I want it to be not too so Just a nice little medium sauciness to it. A little bit more liquid here. 
Now these are all vegetables, so if you get a little bit of your vegetables from your broth, it's okay going in here. It's just going to add to the flavor. It's just going to puree up. Here we go again. Time, yeah, you got 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes. Oh my God, not the 10 minutes anymore, man. Okay. Now I have to go ahead and thin it out where I want it to be. I want to use the blender this time. Perfect. Okay. Let's set this here. And I'll move this back over to the stove. Some salt and some pepper. A couple of grinds of sea salt. A couple of grinds of cracked pepper. Now it's funny, you know, I'm going to season these things. I, I, aside from using my sense of taste, you know, it's sight and smell, you know, in order to get a seasoning for what I'm doing. And also, I think about the other ingredients what I'm going to be doing with it. All right, Jackie. Jackie's going to hey. be tasting. Here we go. Jackie. You know, if there's enough sulfur, are you coming over here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, I'll take a taste here, too. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. Mm. Perfect. It's, I can taste, like, the mm. onion. <laughs> the onion and the garlic in there. It's Beautiful. amazing to me. Nice and creamy. All right. So, that part's done. Give that a thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Here. <laughs> I'm now, going. I'm going to <laughs> take my beans here. I mean, tasting along the way is very important. So you must make sure you taste your food. Now I'm going to go very simple. I mean, some of your dishes must have a canvas to it. You know, it has to have a blank canvas and everything else goes on top. I'm going back to my laboratory here. Ah. I'm going to go a little bit of cumin in the rice. You know, I'm not going to toast these. You know, sometimes I toast the spices, sometimes I don't. It depends on what I'm feeling like because cooking the spices is going to give an entire different flavor than if you leave it raw. Some parsley. This is the last of my parsley. I mean, I like to take my <laughs> herbs and I like to dry them myself. You start off with tons and tons. I just dry them or freeze them tons and tons and you get down to the end of the season. We put in some garlic powder. This is the onion powder here. And then some garlic powder. Now, a little bit of that. And we need some grinds of salt to go in. Now to this, the water is completely absorbed. I'm going to put in some extra virgin olive oil. Just to give it, make it easier for me to mix. I mean, again, Use the fork to fluff and mix. Now this is about a couple of cups of rice in here. You know, so you really have to balance this off with your salt and the salt that may exist and everything else that you're having. Can we get a little tilt of the pan there? There you go. Got that? Yeah. Nice. All right, I'm going to throw in some more. In fact, I'm going to take this off of the burner. Bring this over here so that I can work off the burn here. I'm going to put in some more parsley. I just like the color of green. Everything's about color. <laughs> you know, color, color, color. Eat by color. It's like painting by numbers. All right? So we got that. We'll give that a little taste. See where our salt balance is. Okay. Now yeah, for the beans. Perfect. All right, so that does its thing. Sauce is ready. Now we're going to heat our pan for the corn tortillas, and then we begin the plate. Here's my plate. Here's my garnish. I'm going to plate this right here. Is that a good spot for you, Jackie? Yeah, I know. That's fine. I'll zoom right in. We have one sauce here. You know what? I'll bring this right over here. All right, so we can plate that up. Because it's too hot to put in the cooler. I'm going to slice 
some onion, some thin red onion while the pot is heating. So nice and thin. I mean, when you're for me, some people like onion. I like onion as well. When I'm going to use onion as an edible garnish, I like to spice it nice and thin, unless it's on a hamburger. If it's on a burger, <laughs> I'm going for the go. All right, there's our garlic there. That's heating up. Get our tortilla. Are you using corn or flour, Shell? These will be corn tortillas. Okay. You know, it, it's funny, you know what I mean? You know, a lot of people that like flour tortillas, you know, but I, I grew up with corn tortillas. I mean, in my area, sometimes I can find yellow corn. I would prefer yellow corn, but white corn would do. And sometimes I'm feeling a little courageous and I make my own. We'll do that for another show. We'll make some corn tortillas. So we let this get nice and heated up, nice and soft. And then we'll start plating. All right, there you go. We got this, we got this. I want to make my life easier for this. I'll take some of the beans and put it in the bowl here. Bring it towards me. All right. Now I like to heat my tortilla so it gets nice and soft. I mean, if you want to char a little bit, you can. Give a little crunch. That's entirely up to you. All right. That one's done. We're dropping another one, and we'll begin to plate. Now for lettuce, we're gonna grab the lettuce out of here. Instead of using lettuce and makes it a little bit more nutritious, I like to use dark greens. So I have here a mixture of spinach and arugula. So baby spinach and arugula. You know, so arugula, that rocket, is going to give a little bit more spice and the spinach, a little bit more pungency and this overall little sweet flavor, that green flavor to it. That's number two. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> My stomach is growing. Yeah. Yeah, number three. So I'm going to take some of the guacamole. Let me move that right here so we can see. Take some of the guacamole or the avocado sauce and spread that on the bottom. Every way in this, this is going to sink. Layer that down with some rice. On top of that, and this is for dress up. I mean, you can almost have like a vegetarian taco bar. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. All right. Now I'm going to put some beans in here. And my little tortilla is ready. So I might as well go ahead and get that going. A little bit of the guacamole sauce. And a little bit of rice down on there. Now, is that a brown rice that you started with? Yes, brown rice. All right. Now, we'll do some beans on top of those, each of those. A little bit of bean. Now again, you can heat these up, your tortillas up, and you can store them so they remain hot. You decide how much you want of each ingredient on top of your dish. Now put in some carrot. Let me turn it this way so you can see better. How's that done here? Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we got some okay. carrot here. Again, we start building on our colors, our textures, our flavors. All right. Some pepper. I love how simple this is. I know, and it's been 30 minutes, and yeah, so to eat. I know he started some things early, but still. Well, the beans, I mean, it's, it's almost like just grabbing something out of your fridge and just saying, okay, what can I make with this? This is what I have. I have beans. Now, we put on a little bit of this spicy tomato sauce. Whoa. <laughs> that was a good one there. That was raw. Did you see that one? <laughs> we got a little chunk that was stuck inside. You know what? A little chunk that was stuck inside of the... Oh, the squeeze part, yeah. yeah. The squeeze part, we do that. <laughs> See, I like to save my tips. I have some tips specifically for pastry stuff. And if I were to cut them all, then I wouldn't have any nice little tips. <laughs> so there's that. And then we'll throw on some arugula. 
And some spinach. Jackie, you'll be ready to taste? Yeah, what All kind right. of wine are we doing with that? All right, I'm going to get to the wine in a minute. So yeah. we'll get going. Some fresh onion here. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And now, if you wanted to have some more, I'll put it on one. If you wanted to have some more of the avocado sauce, your guests can do that. So we'll just put it on top of one. There you go. Jackie, come on uh, and have a taste, I and then I'll grab the wine. Over. You betcha. So Jackie's going to taste it. So what we have here, again, simply is just vegetarian tacos with brown rice, corn tortilla, brown rice, onion, black beans. Did I just, just watch me flavor here? And Jackie's going to give us a taste. Thank you. you want a napkin? Sure. Can you see that at all, Ann? <laughs> I love the colors. <laughs> here we go. Not going to be neat. I know. I, can, I agree. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> mm. There's a glass for you. There you go. Glass for me. Very good. I just added a few ingredients. You know what? Then I'm going to kick it up a notch myself. On this second one here, I'm going to put some of my uh, smoked paprika double zero spikes on there. That's how I like to do things. <laughs> now for the wine, what we have here is a local wine, Red Door from Parallel. Can you see that? Not Red, Door, Red Door from Parallel 44, uh, made from locally grown grapes or grown on grapes there. And this grape here is called Foch. The style of this wine will be very soft. You know, more medium body, almost like drinking a Pinot Noir, but again, it's made from here, made from locally grapes grown here. So I'm going to try this red because of the kind of spices I have, you know, the colors. I'm going to try this one. I thought this would be a good wine to go with it. So I'll take a bite. And you'll find that it's hard for vegetarians at times to find wine to go with vegetables. But it, just like food, it's all about the flavors that are involved. Mmm. Good kick? Yeah. Mmm. Such as here. All right. Now the wine. <laughs> Sometimes I surprise myself, Ann. <laughs> well, because so what's the, name of the vineyard shell? What's the name of the vineyard? Parallel 44? Parallel 44 is the name of the winery. This is their second winery called Door 44 in Sturgeon Bay. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they go great together. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Perfect match. They're nice and smooth. If it's spicy, there's enough fruit that it's spicy. It is subdue the spiciness in the dish, but also bring forth a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Salute. That's good. So again, I, I, hope, I hope you and your guests enjoyed this. Yeah. You know how simple it is, is to put something together. If you, oftentimes we have these ingredients on hand, and it takes no time to do it. So that's the show. I wanted to thank you because, again, it makes it look possible. So many people think they've got to go through a drive through a window or eat something like that. And if you can just do it in your kitchen, it was 30 minutes from the beginning through eating. It looks lovely. It's just beautiful. So I thank you, Jackie and Shell, for bringing your kitchen to the Creating Calm Network. And you. and you were entirely, I think, vegan. You weren't even vegetarian. I think you were all vegan with everything. Yes. That's yes. even more special. In yeah. Including the wine. <laughs> Including wine, and that, that'd be for another story about vegan wines. <laughs> well, thank you. That sounds great. And again, your cooking show, Cooking in the Raw, is May 21st. Yes. And they can find um, Jackie and Shell by going to Cooking in the Raw magazine. That's probably a good place to look. Yes. Um, is, that, the, is there a better place? Yep, on a Facebook page, Cooking in the Raw magazine, or better yet, cookingintheraw.net. Yep. Okay, there you go. And that way you can find out about the happy hours and all the wonderful magic. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.